Welcome to the Glam Life Podcast. I'm your host, Victoria Glam, and I've coached hundreds of beauty business owners to scale and expand their businesses. I did this myself with the Microblading Institute and Brow Sister PMU products, and I've created this podcast to help you turn your business goals into reality. Today, we're talking about the unique experience of feeling alone while managing your beauty business. Whether you're just starting out or you've been in the game for a while, it's very common to feel isolated and overwhelmed at times. Currently, the economy is trending downward, right? We're seeing an influx of solopreneurs close their shops, many of them looking to other fields for employment, others seeking a life raft in the form of employment at maybe larger salons. So first and foremost, know, number one, that you are not alone. Building a business, especially in the beauty industry, can be tough and lonely. It's a journey for sure. And it's even tougher when compounded with a weak economy. I feel like no one wants to say that. No one wants to admit that. But that is absolutely happening. Don't let anyone gaslight you. Yes, there is less money being spent. Period. And it's important to remember that every successful entrepreneur that you follow right now, that you look up to right now, who's been in the game for a long time, has faced similar challenges um, and, and feelings of isolation. In 2008, we saw the real estate bubble pop. The markets crashed. Many of the beauty industry came out the victor, though. So how did that happen? right? I think a lot of people say that the beauty industry is recession proof. That's the term. That's the buzz term everyone uses. During the Great Recession, um, what was it called? Black Monday, when all the markets crashed. Also the Dust Bowl, which I feel like not a lot of people know about, but I read this amazing book about it in college. The beauty industry took hits but largely benefited when other industries folded. So for instance, (coughs) We had the creation of global makeup giant Maybelline. As the story goes, um, the man had a sister named Mabel who used to um, take glycerin, so Vaseline, and glycerin jelly, Vaseline, and she would mix ashes into it and she would put it on her eyelashes to make her lashes longer and prettier than everyone else's in town. And this man was smart enough to use like a bottle brush or whatever it was, a comb, something, and put it in a bottle and he called it Maybelline because it was Mabel and Vaseline, which uh, I mean, I don't know how true that story is, but that is the story. I actually heard that story on History Channel, so I kind of do believe it. And just imagine like the innovation that comes out of these big recessions because people have the time, people have the creativity, but also the fact that there's market space opened up. So yes, people are closing their shops left and right in a market that was widely lauded to be oversaturated. So now it's not going to be oversaturated. And you said to yourself, if this market wasn't so oversaturated, I'd be killing them. Okay, well, here we go. As we come out of this recession, I better see you killing it. Because that's what you said. (laughs) It's easy. (laughs) It's easy to allow like the day-to-day numbers to kind of like sully your excitement and your, your drive, your excitement for the business. And I can totally understand how making the choice between new marketing materials or a new product line or something and literally keeping the lights on is a dampening experience. But making the decision to pull the plug altogether is a soul crushing experience. Turning the light off on your dream, I can't even imagine. One way to combat these feelings is really to build a support system of like-minded individuals who can relate to your experiences and offer guidance and, and offer encouragement. And this can come in the form of a mentor, a business coach, a group of other people who are also in your industry and kind of like get it, you know, the girls that get it, get it. <laughs> the girls that don't, don't. Yes. Okay. Let's just get very meta for a second. Name the elephant in the room. Yes, I am a beauty business coach, but that is not my point and that is not why I'm talking about this right now. There are many, many mentors you can choose from, albeit they don't even have to be professional coaches, by the way. My first beauty business mentor was my friend Shannon. 
sh- uh, shout out to Shannon, I guess. <laughs> um, Shannon has been a salon owner for ages, not to make her sound old. She's very young, actually, but she's outgoing. She's fun. Who doesn't love Shannon? She is also a friend and a home to everyone. Anyone who's down on their luck, maybe their booth rental didn't work out. Maybe they closed their own salon. Come to Shannon's. Oh, you don't have anywhere to live right now. You, you are getting a divorce or whatever. Crash on Shannon's couch. Shannon is that girl. Anyway, I really entered the beauty industry feeling like a complete outsider and I had very little um, management experience from my first corporate job. So I knew a little something about it, but I had not made the connection yet that working for myself in the beauty industry was actually managing a business. Those two neurons had not met each other in my brain yet. So um, many times Many times that first year when I was renting a room for Shan- from Shannon, I would seek her advice on things from everything, like from pricing to policy, everything. Um, how to deal with the Karens of the world, how to resolve a dispute with a client, everything. I, I sought her advice. And sometimes she had easy answers. Other times she just asked really thought-provoking questions that helped guide me, basically. Whether she meant to do that or she just didn't have an answer and was asking questions, I don't know, but it was still really helpful to me. She spoke from experience. And when that wasn't enough, we also had Miss Pat. Now, Miss Pat is a force, okay? She runs Shannon's shop and I totally see the genius in it now. Um, Back then, I just thought it was just Shannon being Shannon, you know, friend to all, home for everyone. But now I really see the genius that is Shannon working in hiring Miss Pat. See, Miss Pat Miss Pat um, was the shop manager. So Shannon got to continue working behind the chair and being light and fun and friendly. But Miss Pat was the enforcer. She was retired and it only ever felt like, you know, well, listen, this is the shop's policy and policy is what it is. Miss Pat didn't write it. She's just kind of delivering the news. Hey, you're a day late on your rent. You got two more days to pay it. Are you owe a fee? Hey, you wanted to use some of that back bar? That's fine, you can, but you owe blah, 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 blah. It's just the policy. So Shannon never had to be the bad guy, but Miss Pat could deliver any feedback with like this tight little smile and this air of reassurance. You spoke with Miss Pat for a while and you knew everything was gonna be okay. It never felt like, oh, mom's in the room. It never felt like that. Plus, she may not have spent her career in the beauty industry, but Miss Pat had a lot of real world experience and in life and in, in business and management. Um, I think she used to be an underwriter for loans or something like that. So she really understands running a tight ship, doing things by the book, enforcing a policy, even if it's not her policy, even if she doesn't agree with the policy. So um, it was very like like business with like warm business, let's call it. Let's call it warm business. She was a warm businesswoman, but she's very pragmatic in life, period, okay? Because she told me this story once that <laughs> her husband had been messing around on her, right? And she called up the mistress and invited her over and made this woman coffee and sat down with her and calmly told her how they were essentially going to transfer power. She was like, look, you want this man? You want these problems? Take them. This is how we're going to do it. I think he even showed up and she was like, this doesn't concern you. We're talking. The adults are talking. Like, she is pragmatic as fuck. She is a badass, okay? I look up to and love Miss Pat more than you'll ever know. She's always calm and just her general presence is very reassuring. And she never charged me a dime for these conversations. She was not my business mentor. Now, I did eventually need a business mentor because I needed somebody who was in my industry and had experience in it and could help me with things like social media and and learning how to um, really create a presence for my business and all that kind of stuff. But I I got my basics first from someone who I was just lucky enough to be in close proximity with. I was so lucky to have them when I was starting out, truthfully. I also made the decision very early on not to allow other girls in my same industry to be my competitor. I do not compete. I manifest, I pray, and I work really hard really fucking hard. So I have all the bases covered. So why would I ever need to compete? I don't. I can't. I will not. I do not compete with other women. Um, you are not, you, 
listen, I'm going to talk directly to the girls in my town, okay? If you do brows or if you do permanent makeup in Lafayette, Louisiana, I want to let you know right now, you are not now nor have you ever been my competition for clients in this market. You are my colleague, period. Now, listen, I'm talking to everybody again. Some colleagues have more scruples than others, let's say. Me saying, hey, you are not the enemy does not mean you are automatically the friend, right? Though with my abundance mindset, let's say like 99% of these people actually are friends, but it's okay when somebody wrongs you to say, I wish you well, but you cannot eat at my table with me. Someone very smart said that to me once, not to me, but I, you know, she gave me this advice and I thought it was just absolutely fucking genius. I wish you well, but I there's no chair at my table for you because of how you have behaved yourself. So my advice is not to go around town and tell every girl in your town who does lashes just like you, hey, we're going to be besties. No, but it's nice to be able to say, you know what? She does really beautiful work. And the, and the quiet part, the part that we don't say out loud is, and she's a bitch. We don't say that. <laughs> Not even because it's unprofessional, but also because your experience with someone is not someone else's. So while she may have treated me absolutely terribly, terribly, she has also been incredibly kind and giving to someone else, I guarantee you. And for me to say that to the person she treated so well, they're only going to view me as a hater. They're not going to think that I must have had a horrible experience. They're only going to think of their experience. Chestnut checkers, baby. <laughs> By the way, speaking of, it is also very important um, when you're when you own your own solopreneurship or even owning your own salon with other people working underneath you to make time for self care and honestly to prioritize your well being. This will help prevent burnout like you don't even know. It's the easiest way, and it just keeping that schedule of self care. Honestly, that schedule of self care. I love. Uh, the Warren Buffett method. In December, I block off all the weeks for my entire next year that I'm going to need for vacations and I put non-refundable deposits down. So we got to do it. Can't move those dates. They're already blocked off. You can't add a calendar, a client, a conference, a speaking engagement, nothing. Those dates are set in stone. My husband can go ahead and ask off from his job. I don't ever have to do that. <laughs> but he can. And they're, they're set in stone. It is what it is. This will prevent burnout and keep you motivated and energized as you kind of navigate the ups and downs all year long of running a business. I was years in before I caught on to this. I had to set really firm boundaries. I put my phone on do not disturb at 5.00 p.m. and I will not be answering it until at least 8.30 a.m. the next day. You can catch me during business hours, babe. I am not answering you at 10 p.m. By the way, there are no emergencies in permanent makeup. Not a one. There's no reason on planet Earth that I need to answer anybody at 10.30 p.m., at 7 p.m. This is the time that is dedicated to myself, to my husband, to my children, and that's it. I am a business owner. I own a business. I am a human who happens to own a business. I am not. I am not a business. So I, we can talk about this more in depth next week. I have some other things I, I wanted to talk about today, but... I'm telling you, this is often the root of many closures. The first step to the downfall of Rome is being overbooked, over busy, and, and under cared for. And also, just kind of piggybacking off of that, I want to remind you to celebrate your successes, no matter how small they might seem. Building a business takes time and effort. And every step forward is worth acknowledging. So I hear this so, so often. High achievers are always playing chess, not checkers. They're always thinking many steps ahead. So when they accomplish something in real time, they pass that moment several steps ago. It feels silly to go back and celebrate it now, like it's too late. We accomplished this goal two months ago, even if it only became like verified by outside sources later. For instance, getting your license in the mail. Yeah, you already knew that you passed your state board exam. You got the little paper that said, congratulations, you passed. But you didn't get your actual license in the mail for a month. 
Still, you should take a picture holding that license next to mom and dad who helped you through beauty school, holding a bouquet of roses and frame that bitch and post it and tell everybody, I did it. And you should still go out to dinner and pop a bottle of champagne and celebrate because it's something that you worked months and months and months for. And it doesn't matter if you already knew about this and acknowledged it in your brain a couple of months ago. It doesn't matter. Stop it celebrate enjoy the taste of your success don't overindulge in it but allow it to let you yearn for more and then come back refocused remember how good that felt yesterday let's get that feeling back it's okay to be addicted to success that's fine as long as you know how to moderate yourself don't become a workaholic but get right back to the grind the next carrot as it were And if you're feeling overwhelmed or unsure of where to turn, don't hesitate to reach out for help. If you're feeling alone in managing your beauty business, know that you are not alone. And there is always support available to help you succeed. I'm telling you there is. I know a million coaches and I know a million programs. And there are even people like, for social media help, let's say, follow Brock Johnson. That's free. And he gives solid advice. I think if you're feeling alone in managing your beauty business, you are not alone. It just feels that way. So keep pushing forward and remember to take care of yourself along the way. Thank you so much for tuning into the Glam Life Podcast. I really appreciate it. If you would like to discuss this or any of the other subjects on my podcast, you can always continue the conversation on Instagram at victoria.glam.